Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you guys all in Blackboard already. We can start with some green check marks and then we will get going. And while you guys are checking in, if you encountered any problems with the types of reactions or any of the balancing questions from the learning guide unit six, you wanted me to go through any of that, let's start with that. Uh, apparently page numbers aren't reliable, so if you can give like section, question, number, and letter, we could, we could work with that. But uh, if there's no questions, we'll just move on to 5.1, acids and bases. But I, I'm hoping there might be a few questions out there with regards to some of the stuff we went through last day. So we can practice up some more balancing. Perfect. Uh, Ava has a couple. Ava, if you have a couple balancing questions, I'm sure they're, they're doozies. You didn't print five. We're on unit five today. Can, uh, fill in the blanks as you go, perhaps. Uh, if you want to start with any questions, throw them in. Anything relating to unit six? I'm gonna just jump over to the learning guide and we'll see what comes up. If you can just throw one in, we'll get started and then you can figure out what the other ones might be. That'll work as well. So when I get left you guys, yesterday I asked you to uh, go through some of the, the types and balancing this is my uh, page. Apparently we don't have page numbers anymore on these things. Uh, 6.1 practice after all of the summary. Very last one, balancing. That does look a bit tricky. You have no E on balancing. V and W, question two, 6.1. V and W. Oh, that looks like a tricky one because of the polyatomic. Oh, you don't get uh, E. I got you, Taylor. All right. Let's, let's do E first. And then we will mosey on over to the last couple. Taylor, was it a, a type of reaction thing or was it a, um, a balancing type thing? So, okay, so when, when I look at E, I'm trying to identify the type of reaction taking place. And I notice I have compounds to uh, begin. So remember, we're always kind of looking at uh, either side of the arrow, the reactants and products. No, no, reactant side, I have a metal and a polyatomic. I have a metal and a non-metal. So there's nothing special about this one. There's no oxygen gas to begin with. There's no acid or base to deal with. So this is just a double replacement. Double replacement type reactions can get tricky. Um, but let's see if we can't just balance this out right now. So I'm going to just T-chart it. I know you guys didn't have this luxury of just cutting one out at a time, but bear with me. All right, so we started with silver. This NO3 is balancing as a group on both sides, so I'm going to leave it together uh, because it appears on my reactants and product side. I can leave it as a group. Uh, so Ag, NO3, K, and Cl. If I start with those things, I am going to end with those things. So I can write them down. Now I'm going to count. Uh, silvers, I have one, NO3 group one, potassium one, Cl one. I think, Taylor, you might have been confused because it turns out it's already balanced. Uh, unless I'm mistaken. 
I think this might be a case of it was so easy it threw you off for a bit of a loop. Uh, so one silver on each side, one group of NO3 or one nitrogen, three oxygens on either side, uh, one potassium, one chlorine. I think we're okay, unless somebody wants to uh, chime in and tell me why that may be wrong. Um, often you'll see these things just left blank. Sometimes people will put in ones to indicate that, oh yeah, I've balanced that. It was just ones. So I think that was it. Just a nice straightforward one to get us warmed up, get us practicing counting and all sorts of other stuff. All right, uh, V and W for question two, 6.1, and then Abby was last, uh, the last few. So let's do that. V and W. Let's grab V first here, and then we'll do W next. All right, first thing we need to do is identify the type of reaction that's taking place. And um, we need to figure out if we're starting with two things, ending with two things, starting with one thing, ending with two, starting with two, ending with one. These all indicate different types of reactions. So I'm gonna kinda just get it straight in my head that I have my reactants on one side, my products, and it looks like I'm starting with two things and I'm ending with one thing. So that is going to be a, a synthesis type reaction. So our elements, our compounds are combining together. So calcium hydroxide and CO2, carbon dioxide, combining together to give me calcium HCO3, I think that's like hypochlorite or something like that. And uh, yeah, I could see how this would be a tricky one to balance because you, it's going to be a bit of a pain to count your oxygens and try to get them strained out. All right, so the elements I'm dealing with are calcium. The OH group doesn't stay OH on both sides, so I'm going to have to break those down. Uh, I also have carbon by itself, so I'm going to have to deal with that as well. I mean, there's really no rhyme or reason to how I'm writing these things down. I'll probably, uh, I'll probably go calcium, hydrogen, oxygen, and then carbon last. Calcium, hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon last. And then I can start counting these things to try to get them straightened out. All right, so calcium, I'm starting with one. Hydrogen, I have two. Oxygen, I have four. And carbon, I have one. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. My product side, I have one calcium. I have two hydrogens. I have two carbons and I have, oh no, there's carbon down at the bottom two carbons, and I have six oxygens. Okay, here we go. You guys are gonna really test my skills here first thing in the morning. So, I haven't done this. Thinking on my toes, I see that calciums are balanced, so I'm happy with that. They're gonna eventually unbalance. The, the key to doing this question is that um, I'm probably gonna have to balance the CO2 group last just because it has less impact on everything going on here. So uh, calcium's balanced, hydrogen's balanced, oxygen's my first problem. I have six on the product side and then only four on the reactant side. So just trying to think of a way to do this without upsetting the balance of things, but I can't. All right, I'm gonna just go for it and then I might have to go back and start all over again. So here we go, calcium's good, hydrogen's good, oxygen's not good, carbon's not good. 
I'm going to try to balance the carbon first. I know I said I didn't want to do that, but let's go for it. I'll put a 2 here, changes my carbons to 2, and my oxygens to 2, 4, 5, 6. Is that it right there? Two carbons, two carbons, one calcium, one calcium. Two groups of two is four, five, six. I think, uh, I think that might be it. Unless somebody can point out my mistake, I think everything's balanced there. I could see how you would try to balance something like the uh, maybe the oxygens first. You did that and got it wrong. Well, let's count. Am I, have I made a mistake on counting somewhere here that we're not seeing? I have two carbons here. I have two carbons here. So carbon's good. I have two calcium, or one calcium, one calcium, two oxygens, another four, six oxygens, and two times three. Uh, can somebody tell me what the answer is? Because I don't, I guess I could just scroll down on this page. You guys probably have it quicker than I can find it. Uh, what did we do here? We did V. J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V. So it has it at, as 1, 1, 1. Yeah, that's definitely incorrect. So what did we decide here? It was going to be 1, 2, 1. Uh, there you go. Well, then maybe this is why you guys are... Uh, are having troubles with the last few because the answers possibly are wrong. Uh, so for sure that one should be one, two, one. Maybe this is one of these fancy things that teachers do to see if you guys are just copying the answers out of the back of the book if you're actually doing the problems. I don't know. Maybe that's me just looking into it too deeply. Um, all right. Yeah, definitely. Let's do the next couple and we'll see if those are wrong as well. Did anybody else have the same sort of issues there, finding the wrong answers? Or getting the answers wrong? So we did this guy. We did V and uh, WX. I can see X is going to be a tough one because that's a combustion. Let's do Y. Did it W and then that's it for you. Okay, we'll do W for you for sure. Grab it here. All right. Somebody identify the type of reaction first and then I will see if I can balance it for us. Just throw it into chat. While I'm going through this, <laughs> why well, was near impossible? We have PB, the NO3 group changes to NO, so I'm going to have to do those separately, NO. And if I start with PB, NO, I have to end with them. Perfect. So you guys are right. It's definitely a decomposition reaction. Uh, we have... The, I'm just going to see if I can send this to the back. It'll stop jumping in front of everything. Perfect. Uh, definitely decomposition. We have one thing breaking down into several things. Uh, it doesn't necessarily just have to break down into two. In this case, obviously, three things. So let's count them up, and then we'll see if we can balance. So one and one. I have two nitrogens to start, I have six oxygens, I have one nitrogen over here, and five oxygens. This is one of these times where you end up with this odd number of oxygens on your product side, and you want to kind of deal with that. 
Because if you don't, then you're never going to be able to balance it because you're always going to end up with an even odd scenario. So because I have um, this two back here, there's really nothing I can do to make this uh, odd on the, the reactant side for the oxygens. So the first thing I see is my nitrogens need to be balanced. Four, five, six, seven. Yeah, what I'm going to do right off the bat, this may seem kind of really strange, but I'm going to put a, a two here to make this oxygen uh, into an even oxygen. And it kind of seems like it's unbalancing everything, but it, it will likely work out in the end in our favor. So that changes that to two. Um, that's not what I wanted. The oxygen goes from five to two, four, six. So that kind of looks like it ruined everything, but uh, let's see if we can't just sort it out now. So now my lead is unbalanced, so I'm gonna have to put a two here, which changes this to two, uh, this to four, and this to 12. And then my nitrogens are unbalanced, so I'm gonna put a four here. So that's four and eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Two, four, eight, 10, 11, 12, two, four. I'm thinking that's good. Uh, somebody wanna tell me if that's the same answer that's in the back? The back's gonna say two, two, four, one. Hopefully, the answer said something else. Oh, whoever made the answer key to this learning guide was uh, not having their best day, apparently. It says 2223. Two, two, hmm. Two, 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 three. Okay, so the answer in the back says two, 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 three. Is there gonna be a problem with that? Two times two is four. Yeah, our nitrogens won't balance if you have two, two, uh, two, three, because you'd have four nitrogens here and you'd only end up with two nitrogens here. So that can't work. So there you go. Uh, did, did we run into problems with the remaining ones? <laughs> you probably got them all right, Abby, but you just didn't uh, have enough sort of confidence. You always expect the book to be right or the, the end of the learning guide to be correct, right? Um, do I need to do the last ones as well? Are they, are they wrong as well in terms of the learning guide? Answers. Was there, a, was there a consensus among getting the last couple wrong? Uh, w and Ab, you had another question from above that I didn't get to yet. Y, letter Y, last one. I'll do Y and then we'll, uh, we'll maybe move on if nobody has any other questions. Um, So there's letter Y. I'm not sure if the answer in the back is right or wrong. Hopefully I can balance it and we can figure that out here. So four OH. Hmm. Looks like we lost blackboard. Well, we don't have Blackboard for a second. Hopefully the live stream's still working, and if it's not, then I guess there's no way for you guys to tell me that. Maybe if somebody sends me a message in, uh, in Moodle just to let me know that everything's kind of working uh, in terms of the audio, that'd be really great. Assuming Blackboard stays offline, I'm just gonna pretend like you're all there and then I'm just gonna balance this. 
And then I'll see if, uh, if somebody could send me a message in Moodle just saying, hey, Mr. Borden, yeah, we can see and hear you. Uh, that would be good. So I could be just talking to myself right now, and you could figure it out on the live stream later, I guess, the recording. Uh, SO4. Let's try to balance that SO4 as a group. Brillium O. H S O four beryllium oxygen That's three four five S O four groups. There's one beryllium. There's one. I can't do it that way. I have to do it individually. It's just going to be a little extra counting. All right, hydrogen. Oxygen, sulfur, beryllium. Four, six of those sulfurs, one, and beryllium's one, hydrogen's two, oxygen's eight, sulfur is two and beryllium is three. I'm going to check, see if anybody sent me any messages. Doesn't look like it. Just kind of slowly refreshing here. Jump back here. All right. Uh, where to start? Where to start? I don't think it really matters where we start. This is looking like a pretty messy one. Oxygen's kind of working out. That should be nine. I'm going to make these oxygens even right off the bat. So I'm going to put a two here. That changes that to eight. And now I have 10 oxygens. So that'll do. Hydrogens aren't balanced. I have five. Hmm. we we'll put a two here. Changes that to six, eight. Sulfur gets changed to two. Oxygens, eight and 10. All right, now I'm gonna have to go back and change my hydrogens. My oxygens seem to be good now, so Oh, I'm going to have to deal with this beryllium as well. I could see how you would have issues with this. There we go. Ah, uh, beryllium. Let's put a three there. Three beryllium's. Six oxygens plus another four is eight is twelve. Oh, that's fourteen. Uh, and then hydrogens, three times two is six, plus another six is twelve. Let's see what we can do now. All right, hydrogens, let's go back and Deal with those. Uh, hydrogen's four. I need 12, so I'm going to put a six here. Uh, six hydrogens. That also gives me six oxygens plus another eight oxygens. It's 14. So 
Sulfur 2, I think that might be it. This is, uh, it's so lonely in here without chat. Seems kind of silly, but. All right, let's see if anybody's replied to me here in Moodle, letting me know that you can still see and hear me. It's a negative. All right. Mr. Ross has suggested we put up a timer, and maybe we'll just do that so we don't have to cut anything out later. Uh, it's possible that this isn't getting broadcasted at all. So um, if somebody in the, maybe put up like five minutes, and if somebody you can send me a message in Moodle, uh, just saying, hey, Mr. Borden, we can see and hear you. If you can, I'll continue, but if nobody sends me a message, then uh, I'll just kind of keep trying and waiting and see what we can do. So we'll put up that timer now and see if we can fix whatever's wrong. Thanks.
All right, sorry about that, guys. Well, I don't know why I'm apologizing. The network has been kind of kicking in and out uh, for the last while, so it froze for some of us. Okay, perfect. Um, the the uh, the network is up and down, and it's been uh, it's been a bit of a mess. So. I saw a blackboard cut out, but I couldn't tell if you guys could see me on the live stream. Uh, but it seems like some of you continued to see me and some of you did not. So that's kind of a bit strange, but um, there we go. Uh, can we balance a few more? Even BCBL website wasn't working for a while. Yeah, that's all, I guess, through run through the district. So uh, it's just a matter of the what's getting sent out of our, our building here. And uh, it all goes through a TELUS network that's controlled by the province. And I guess if it's not working, it's not working. So uh, we got to come up with a better way for you guys to let me know that the live stream's working. Um, we'll figure something out or we'll just hope it gets fixed. But uh, we'll just go. <laughs> you hate TELUS? They're not that bad, Alex. I mean, let's give them a chance. All right, uh, Taylor, you want some more balancing? I think we run into, not to, I will do a couple more for sure, Taylor. We run into these problems with balancing, like the, the last one I just did. Um, it was like a super, super hard one. And I guess when you're going through balancing questions, you should know that they're not all going to be super, super hard ones. There are going to be really straightforward ones, which is a couple twos, or it might be already balanced. So don't kind of freak out when you see a balancing question, because they, generally speaking, are, aren't going to pick super difficult ones for you guys to balance. And um, it, uh, it's just kind of one of these things where you, you see all the hard ones and you think, oh, no, I'm not very good at this. Well, some of them are going to be hard and some are going to be straightforward and um, you just kind of kind of hope that you got uh, an easy one. Uh, so, Abby, you wanted me to do this one again? Oh, that was a lot of work sitting here talking to myself. I guess Mr. Ross was listening to me, so that wasn't uh, complete isolation. Um, first of all, I have it up here as 2361. Did anybody else get that? And is that what the um, is that what the answer in the back said as well? Question X between W and Y. Is there no letters in there? This learning guide stuff just kind of falling apart. Of course, this is uh, our first time through it, so. These answers that are coming up is wrong. Sometimes it's uh, just one of those things where we run into these problems and kind of go with it. Yes, it says 2361. All right. So maybe I can just explain uh, quickly how I did it, and then maybe you can just kind of pick up from there. So this is maybe just to explain my thinking on, on why here. And this is looking like a double replacement. No, this is a neutralization reaction. And the reason it's a neutralization reaction because I start with an H and I end with an OH, and then I have water. So H gives us our acid, uh, OH is our base, and then we have some water being produced there. All right, a couple things that I needed to get out of the way. Uh, the beryllium down at the bottom here it only shows up in one spot, so I had to balance that one. So maybe that one I probably should have done first. So once I got beryllium balanced, that kind of changed my oxygens and hydrogens up here, and then I could deal with it from there. So you always want to try to do the things that show up only in one spot first, because it doesn't really allow you any opportunities to kind of balance things out if there is just that one spot where it is. There's, it's not just going to kind of magically work. So the beryllium, because it was just by itself here and just by itself here, that needed to get done first. That changed my oxygens and hydrogens, and it also made my 
uh, oxygens even on both sides, and my hydrogens. So I think once you balance the beryllium, it should kind of fall into place. Uh, the next thing is the, yeah, the sulfurs I would do next. So I would go hydrogen is in balance, 6, and 6 is 12, 6 is 12. I have two groups of three here, and I have three groups of two here. So there's six and six, and six times two is 12. So I'm thinking the hydrogens is balanced, unless I'm missing something. Oh, I see what you guys are saying. You're saying I just didn't put down the the number 12. You have a 4 there, not a 12. No worries. Uh, you don't have to apologize for me doing questions. That's what, uh, what we're here to do, right? We're here to kind of learn and get the difficult ones out of the way. Um, so that one's that. Maybe I'll do X, because I think somebody was asking about X, or they're saying there was no X. I have an X here, uh, this combustion one. And I think Abby, you were saying that uh, also question X between W and Y. Let's do X, it's a, a combustion, and uh, then we'll move on. So I did want to get to some new material today. All right, X. So immediately I see my products are uh, CO2 and H2O. And the only time we end up with products that are CO2 and H2O is if we have a, a combustion reaction. So this is pretty easy to identify. And I also see that I have oxygen as a reactant. So uh, it's important to be able to identify that. And I've mentioned this before. Combustion reactions are always going to be the most difficult to balance. It's because of the problems you run into with the, the oxygens being in two spots over here. You're always going to end up with two here, and you're always going to end up with one here. So you're going to end up with these three oxygens on the product side. And when you have these three oxygens, everything kind of is messy because of that. So CHO, I have eight carbons. I have 18 hydrogens, I have two oxygens. CHO, it's always going to be one, two, three. All right, I'm just going to go through it and balance the carbons and pretend like I don't know any different, and then we'll see where we end up. So I'm going to put an eight here, gives me eight, gives me 16 and another 17 oxygens. That's where we run into these problems with this odd number of oxygens here. And um, you'll see that there's an easy way to deal with it. Some people will balance by putting uh, like a, a half numbers in here. So let's balance our hydrogens next, and then we'll see where we end up. Hydrogens, I have 18, so I'm going to put a 9 in here. That's going to give me 18. Oxygens, I have two groups of 8 is 16, and I have another 9. So that gives me uh, 16 to 9 is 25. And there's no number I can put here to give me uh, 25 oxygens. 25 times 2 is 50. It just simply won't work at this rate. So what I need to do is just double everything. So combustion reactions will almost always work out this way. And why I double everything is to get an even uh, number of oxygens on this water molecule. And that's just going to be the trick that makes everything kind of work. So here we go. I'm going to put a 2 here. I'm going to change this to a 16. I'm going to change this to an 18. I might need to break out my calculator here to count these oxygens. Uh, two groups of 8 gives me 16. 
16 I have there. Uh, let's just look at my hydrogens. I have 36. And over here, 18 times 2 is 36. So that's happy. Now I need to count my oxygens on my product side. You added incorrectly. Okay, that's, uh, that's minor. 16 times 2 is going to be uh, 32. And then I have another 18. So 32 and 18 is 50. So this goes to 50 oxygens. So I can put a 25 in there. So those numbers just got really, really big because I doubled everything. And um, there's another method where people will put in, in front of the oxygens here, they'll put in something like 12.5. And you know you can't have half a molecule, but then once you have something like 1, 12 and a half, 8, and 9, you just double everything to 2, 25, 16, and 18. And that's another method for balancing combustion reactions. You'll see if you were to look online or something like that, you'd see those. Um, so there you go. Combustion are the most difficult in my opinion, but they always work out the same way. You kind of, uh, you go through it and you realize you have this odd even thing happening with your oxygens on the right. So if you just double everything, it'll work out for you. And if you go through it again, I've obviously done these a lot. Um, if you go through it again and again and again, you see the pattern develop. And when you see a combustion reaction, if it just doesn't balance right off, the bat, like some of the smaller ones like uh, CH4 and O2 produces CO2 and H2O, uh, the really small hydrocarbon ones, those ones will balance right away for you. Uh, but as soon as you get into like C6 uh, and above, once you get more carbons, then it all of a sudden you have to double everything. So there you go. I did want to talk about some acids and bases here, and we do have about 40 minutes, so I guess we should have a break somewhere in here. Um, I'm going to just jump in the acids and bases stuff and then maybe take a break, and uh, we won't do two sections today, just the one. So this is unit 5.1, and... Unit 5 super short. It has acids, bases, and salts, and that's it. The, the chemistry unit so far has been a lot of kind of process-oriented stuff, forming the compounds, balancing, kind of more like math. But now we get into this acids and bases section, and it kind of goes back into a little bit of memorization type things. So there's some specific things you need to kind of understand and um, specific reactions that you need to be able to recognize. So... That being said, we'll just jump into it. Now, of course, we talked about acids and bases a little bit when we started dealing with neutralization reactions because we needed to be able to identify what an acid was and what a base was. So in order to be able to identify those things, we had to kind of do this stuff already. So acids and bases are really common. You have tons of acids and bases in your house. You have acids and bases in your body keeping everything working properly. And uh, we just basically look at their chemical structure in order to figure out if it's an acid or a base. So uh, acids and bases can be dangerous. You can get really strong acids and really strong bases. And it suggests that you never try to um, identify if it's an acid or base by taste or touch, which is kind of funny because in the chart, we can identify acids by taste or touch. So we don't recommend you try chemicals to uh, like taste them, but in general, acids will be very sour and we'll run into a bunch of other sort of things that happen with acids and bases. So we have a pH scale. It goes from zero to 14. And right in the middle is seven and seven is neutral. So if something has a pH of seven, it's neutral. If something has a pH of zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, we call it an acid. And if something has a pH of eight through 14, we call it a base. So this tells us how strong an acid is or how strong a base is. And yeah, Ava, we're only doing the one section today, I, 
I think we'll just do this one. Um, so the strength of the acids and bases is measured on the pH scale. It's a logarithmic scale. So just like the Richter scale we talked about, when we had uh, an earthquake on the Richter scale, we said, oh, it was a, you know, a seven on the Richter scale and something was an eight on the Richter scale. That was an increase of 10 times. And if you had a jump of two on the Richter scale, so you went from like, you know, five to seven, that's 10 times 10, that's 100 times stronger. And that goes the same for acids. If you have something that had a pH of zero and you compared it to something that had a pH of two, because you're going two steps, each step is times 10, so times 10 and 10. So something that had a pH of zero is going to be 100 times more acidic than something that has a pH of two. It's kind of weird how it goes from zero and down. So uh, same as the Richter scale, you guys had a really, you know, did a good job of that in the learning guide for the Richter scale. Most of the questions there you guys did just fine. So we can measure the uh, level of acidity with something called a pH indicator. And I wouldn't be surprised if many of you have encountered these before. And the most common is litmus. And then you can have a universal indicator, which is the one you probably have seen before if you have a pool or a hot tub, or even if you've maybe tested soil and uh, on your garden before. And then you have other ones like bromothymol blue, uh, phenolphthalene, and uh, there are natural indicators like cabbage. So I was just talking to Mr. Beetlestone, uh, and he was saying that, because I was digging through to get some chemicals and indicators, and he said, oh yeah, we do acids and bases in grade seven. So if you were with Mr. Beetlestone in grade seven, you've seen many of these things before. It's kind of funny how science works that way. Uh, you do like ecosystems in grade six, I think, and then you see it again in grade 10, and then you'll see it again in uh, grade 11 or 12, biology. Just kind of same stuff gets recycled again and again. We just add a little bit more complexity to it. So in your data book, you guys have a chart that indicates um, the pH scale, and it shows where some common items kind of fall on that scale, and it has all of the indicator colors that are on that scale. So this is right out of your data booklet. Uh, this is page three. Of course, it's in color. If you print it off your own data booklet at home, it's not gonna be in color, but the shading will be uh, different. So here you can see the pH scale. The really great part about most of the acids and bases stuff is that you don't have to memorize a lot of stuff. There are a few things that come up, but if you can just look at your uh, data booklet, you have all of these things on here. So you have the scale from zero to 14. It says everything over here is acidic, everything in the middle at seven is neutral, and everything over here is basic. So you have something like stomach acid, which is hydrochloric acid, which has a a pH of one, and then 10 times less strong, less pH is lemon juice, and then grape juice, tomatoes, bananas. Milk is slightly acidic at a six, and then in the middle we just have uh, water, which is completely neutral. And then basic, you have something like eggs, baking soda, soap, ammonia, bleach, oven cleaner. And there you go. So if we were to compare something on the, the pH scale, let's say uh, bananas and a lemon. You've eaten a banana before, like, you've likely eaten a banana before, uh, it doesn't taste very sour, it's not highly acidic, but something like a lemon is very acidic. So if I go one, two, three,